Who's moderating today? Not me. Oh, totally forgot about that. Uh, who yeah. moderated? I already said out. What are we even talking about today? We're just talking about like a chat, like a, like, oh. a, and there's going to be the child for girls unedited. Oh, right. Okay. That's right. Live. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not really live. Just no, I know, but live, it's <laughs> basically live if we're not, you know, editing. Yeah. So the, the, this is the day where we have really profound things to say after we stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. We're always profound. What do you mean? <laughs> well, we are. But then when suddenly the spotlight's on you and you, and you know that people are going to be listening to you, then your mind just goes... Okay, um, didn't prepare anything. Yeah, now what? I know. Hi. Hola. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Lenora. I'm the creator of The Bitchy Bookkeeper. Hi, I'm Kristen, author of The Age of the Child. Hi, I'm Isabel, founder and firebrand of The Upbringing Spark, and we are the three founding non-mothers of Chopper Girls. And today's episode is going to be an unedited, uncut conversation of the three Chopper Girls. So brace yourself, because we have no idea what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> it's going to get don't. dirty. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, okay. maybe. But I did want to bring something up because I'm a little bit traumatized now. Um, So I am a big fan of everything that has to do with paranormal and real crime. And I have these times in my life when I'm like, I just get completely obsessed. Uh, I don't know if you guys watch this show on Netflix called Haunted. I've not seen Haunted. It's like real uh, short episodes and like real stories of people's encounters with ghosts or other supernatural things the south american version of that in spanish came out very recently so i was like yes and i started watching it and then it got down it was like it's a big very deep rabbit hole for me and so one of the things that i i actually saw and this was actually i saw this in one of the chocolate groups on facebook yesterday somebody said i would really want to like read horror stories or something just like show me the way, like link here or like tell me a story or something that has to do with like supernatural or like horror story. And somebody was talking about the 411, missing 411, this is a documentary. Have you guys heard of it? No? No. Okay. So it's on YouTube. Uh, It's called 411, missing 411. And it's a documentary based in a book that was written by somebody who investigates very strange disappearance um like people disappearing very strangely like the moment moment you're there and then the next you're not and people are like but she was there like two minutes ago and like they start looking for you and it's usually children um very few cases of adults but it's usually children and one of these stories is a a toddler he was like two years old and he got lost just like that like he he was out of sight for like one minute and then they couldn't find him. And they were like camping and then the, they were like just looking all over the forest and the creek and everywhere. And like the kid was nowhere to be found. And to this day, they have not found the kid. And one of the things that one of the guys who was like investigating, like he's a private investigator. So I'm watching this, right? And I'm like, this is super interesting. I'm getting like, oh, like, wow, you know, is it aliens? Is it like, I don't know, mountain lions? Like, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it Zuli? If it's Zulie. <laughs> I saw the kid in the volcano. <laughs> <laughs> and then this private investigator says that he thinks, I mean, he didn't say that he thought the mother had done something, but like he was like trying to imply that she had. And he said, he said like, yeah, because like she had him. And right after she had the child, she tied her tubes because she didn't want to have children anymore but then when I started talking to other people who knew her they all told me that she never actually wanted to have children like she was child free and then this kid was like a mistake and because she didn't want to have children I'm certain that she killed her child wow yeah and this was the investigator who said that yeah okay yeah loosely I mean I'm paraphrasing but yeah the private investigator that she that she and her husband hired who had stopped working with them. Um, so I was like, wow, okay. Like, so because she tied her tube, I mean, it's just like such a bold presumption to, you know, like killing, uh, 
how many stories have you heard of people killing their children because they didn't want to be parents? Well, I've heard a couple, you know, they find um, uh, babies, like brand new babies um, in places where either teenagers have left them. I was just thinking today for some reason, um, imagine if, like imagine how many kids would be dropped in interesting places or killed if people had no option, like if they didn't have birth control and if they didn't have abortion. And all these, you have so many more people than having kids they don't want or aren't prepared for. There would be so many abandoned or dead kids, pretty sure. And to your question, Isabel, I mean, it is it is a kind of odd. I can see both sides. The investigator thinking, okay, so this woman had her tube side. She clearly doesn't want to have kids. She doesn't want to be a mother. There go. She must have killed her child. That does send a dangerous message about people who get sterilized, whether they get sterilized before having kids, you know, so they don't have kids at all, or they get sterilized after. And of course, I think there's there's data that shows that the, a, a lot of abortions that are are done are uh, on mothers that already have like mothers that already have kids and don't want more, right? That we had we had found this data on that before. Yeah, that's um, you know, it's just I I see what you're saying. Like it, I I hate that that's the automatic assumption. And actually, this a similar conversation came up in one of our clubhouse chats uh, to do with true crime. And it was more along the line of, you know, when husband and wife sleep in separate rooms and then one of the spouses goes missing or is killed and they, the, the investigators discover that separate beds are involved. That's like the automatic assumption that, oh, there must've been marital problems when really, I think separate rooms save marriages, <laughs> you know, or relationships. So I, I hate that that's the, the assumption that, this woman got sterilized and maybe she did kill her child. I don't know, but you know, it's, it's. Had there been a discrepancy between what she was telling the police though, and what her friends said, was she telling police, Oh, I always, I was so excited to have my baby. I can't believe my toddler is, or however old this kid was. I'm, I'm just devastated. I was, you, you know, was waiting my whole life to have this child. And then like, was there a difference between what she was saying and then what detectives were finding out talking to her friends? Like, no, God, no, she never wanted kids because that would bring in a question, well, why were you lying? What did you have to hide? No, she was, I mean, to be honest, like she was pretty reserved. And one of the things that like turned on the alarms was the fact that she didn't want to have a lot of publicity around her the disappearance of her child. So like she wasn't mm -hmm. ready to you morning today you i have no idea how they're one of these talk shows morning talk shows is i don't remember which mm -hmm. one one of the big ones uh she was invited along with her husband to go and talk about it and she refused like and so and the, the investigator for the, so the reason why the private investigator decided to stop working with them was because he told them that they should go like national and like offer a twenty thousand dollar reward um, and they declined. So she, he was like, that's not normal. That's not how normal people act when you, mm -hmm. I mean, when your baby, when your baby goes missing, pe normal people will do anything to get that baby back. Right. So yeah. that kind of like turned some alarms on. And like she said, oh, like when she talks about the toddler, she, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if she's, I mean, people can fake things, but I could feel like, yeah, she cared for the kid, like she loved the kid. I, I know she doesn't seem to be extremely overly afflicted either, but you know, people react in different ways. Yeah. Um, but you know, what I understood from what this investigator said was, you know, her friends have told me that she didn't want to have children. Like he was like an accident, basically. He was like, oops, like an oops, mm -hmm. you know, so. So what do you think happened? I have no idea, but <laughs> what, I find, <laughs> what I find terribly, terribly <laughs> insulting is the fact that he, like the, the assumption that she didn't want to have children because she tied her, like she tied her tubes. That means that she really didn't want to have children. This therefore guy, she killed it. Yeah. This little yeah. toddler was an oopsie. Therefore she killed the toddler. And that was, I was offended. And I was at the same time, I was like, <gasps> 
I was like, how dare you? But I was like, at the same time, like, I mean, that could happen. I can see it happening, but that's just such a bold assumption. Mm-hmm. Well, there's, there's two people that come to mind. Casey Anthony, both, yeah. these are both cases in the States. Uh, I don't think that one was ever really solved, but she was acquitted for whatever. And her conduct, I didn't get too much into it, but just what I've seen, her contact, conduct was kind of- Oh, she was partying. Out. She was partying right after. Right, right. And the <laughs> other one happened when I was 12 or 13. This was, who's making noise? <laughs> Someone's loud in my ears. There's Kristen. Kristen, okay. What, what? No, you're moving your, your mic, mic your, your mic, you're moving your mic. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's, sorry. Really, it's really, really loud. Sorry. It's like a windstorm. Massive got it. Windstorm. Sorry. Got it. <laughs> Shh, Kristen. <laughs> I'm just going to leave if you say it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had uh, Su- uh, Susan Smith. Do you Yes, she's one, the one Kristen? who put the car, the car yes. in Yes, and she, her and her husband went out and did the whole publicity thing. And now I was, I was a teen, like I was a preteen, I was 12, 11 or 12. And again, I didn't have a TV growing up. So I saw this when I was at my grandmother's. So there's gaps in my memory, but I remember watching press interviews with that. And I don't know if she offered a reward, but she made up this whole story that a black guy had kidnapped her kids, mm-hmm. but she actually drowned them. She drove her vehicle into the river and it had it was because what she was having an affair or something like i think so yes the guy the guy she was seeing didn't want kids so right right so there's that okay so first of all to your point isabel about someone not wanting to go on national tv when they're making big deals on national tv and i get it it's your child but i think of susan smith she did that whole thing with her husband knowing that she had killed her children so I don't think that always takes away someone's credibility if they don't want to be like to broadcast. I mean, it, it can be either way, but I just think of that, that woman who did the whole crying and, you know, was a distraught mother on national TV. I mean, it was, it was all over ca- Canadian news as well, you know, but she was the one that actually had killed her children and blamed it on a fictional person. So I could see too not wanting to offer twenty thousand dollars because then you know it's like okay so you know how many people are going to call and traumatize me with you know by by saying they saw my child when they didn't see it and like how how am I going to be bombarded by people just trying to get their hands on this money? Could see anybody who really wants to help find there are search parties all the time who go out looking for kids. I mean people really want to help people find their kids. I don't think you need to offer. Mm -hmm. $20,000 $20,000 and whoever, if, if someone did take the child for some kind of sex trafficking or personal, whatever, uh, then I don't think $20,000 is going to get them to give that up anyway. Nope. Uh, you actually make a good point though, Chris. And I, it does sound like a sex trafficking thing because kind of, kind of like the little girl, those... um, that little blonde girl who went missing a long time ago. I think she was Australian and the parents were with a bunch of other parents in this, uh, I forget what country there, I think it might've been Brazil, I'm not sure, but they were all down having dinner and the kids were asleep up in their rooms. You've heard the story as well? Yeah, it's Madeline McCain and they're oh, yes. British yeah, yeah. and they were in Portugal. They were British, okay. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I think that child was definitely taken for that. Oh, they never say that stuff though, do they? They did, there, there's a big that... long documentary about that. Oh, okay. About that okay. one. Wait, do you think that was a, do you think that was a setup? Oh. No, I think I think people who watch for that kind of thing know where oh, okay. know where people travel and you know. Right. Or like someone in their circle. Just because well, what do you mean setup? I mean, do you think the parents, are you asking no, no, if no. I think the parents sold their no. kid into sex slavery or what somebody in their circle? Because you said they were partying, like if they well, they had friends they traveled with, I thought. Yeah, but but that's the thing. Who are your friends? You know, like you just don't know who's an associate or maybe maybe someone in there. I don't know, like people have really weird, dark, twisted secrets and mm-hmm. not to implicate their friend, friends, but maybe somebody connected to their friends who was going to be in that same area heard something and then kind of like it was it was a setup in a way unintentional. You know, I don't know. It just, now I'm going down this rabbit hole we don't need to get into, but I'm starting to think that I don't know if it, it's just too much of a coincidence or it, it seems like something that could be planned. Again, not to implicate the parents or the friends of the parents, but you never know who people are acquainted with, mm-hmm. right? Prince Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein. 
<laughs> hey, what's going on with Prince Andrew anyway? Is he in any kind of trouble yet or is he just no. still walking around? Well, and as of today, his father just died. So that's going to be hush hush for a while, but he's yeah. not cooperative and that's, that's wrong. It's really, I, I mean, gosh, he needs to be there. There's something with that. There's something to do with that, but what is you know, this case? I'm not very well. He's <laughs> okay. So going down the true crime road, did you see the the Jeffrey Epstein documentary on Netflix? Okay, I watched the first a couple episodes. It's real. It's it's hard to watch. It's not like I don't know. I I, I was getting into a dark place watching it, but. He had, he was a known associate or friends with Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein actually paid off his ex-wife. So Fergie's debts, like they're friends. And so the women that spoke out against Epstein, who um, accused him of assault and had photographs with him and was in his house, there's photographs of Prince Andrew with this girl. And she, I, I believe she's underage at the time or she's young. I so there is photographic evidence and he's he went on tv and said oh no i have nothing to do i didn't know about epstein and i didn't know this and i didn't know that had not didn't have sex with this woman who's saying that they did have sex i believe but mm. there's come on you're photographed with a person like you've met the person it's he meets a lot of people evidence. lenora he's a prince he can't remember every single young girl who tries to have sex with him <laughs> impossible <laughs> He's not even that good looking. Okay. No, it doesn't matter if you're. It doesn't if you're... matter. <laughs> <laughs> what, do they call, what do they call a certain kind of person? A star fucker. A a star fucker. Oh star yeah, fucker. but that but that's not what this person was though. But no, I, I know Prince, that. Prince, Prince Andrew is Prince could... Andrew's a star fucker. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> He's totally could... a star that was the whole point of like you don't need to be attractive. Some people just yes. want to yes. copulate yes. with a famous person. That's, oh, that's so true. It's like the women who um, marry criminals, like in prison, like yeah, like, like notorious ones. Like, oh God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isabel's Kristen, like, I didn't you, know we were going there. Kristen, do you do you want to add something else to the conversation? <laughs> no. I don't understand why so many criminals have so like so many groupies. I, I don't get it. Like. And they get all these, I don't know, I've also watched some of these documentaries uh, of like real life, um, like serial killers or like people in jail. And they get all these like pictures of like naked women and like letters and love letters. And, like, I'm like, I don't understand what has to go through your mind for you to send a naked picture of you to a convicted murderer and tell him that you want to fuck him. They'll never pressure you for kids. (laughs) (laughs) You, oh my God. I was going to say, if you want to answer that question on our show, please write in and let us know. You can send us letters, just, just not the naked picture thing. But, um, now I, oh my goodness. Is that what it is? Is that's we're, we're going to give child free people a bad name. (laughs) Cause yeah, I guess you can't have kids with somebody in prison. Um, Again, I remember when the Menendez brothers, this is when I was in my massive true crime phase at the age of 12. And one of them had a wife, or maybe both of them had wives. Like you have like, yeah, women write in, they feel sorry for, I don't know. They, they just want to make them better people. I don't know. They're just attracted to someone in prison. And so then they it could be, they felt that I, I, I'm not convinced that the Menendez brothers were not abused and were not trying to find the only escape they could oh, really? from abuse. That's what their that's what their argument was, and that was their whole story. Yeah. And they document they told all the details of this abuse from very young ages. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm I know that, that, that like there are women who will kill their abusive husbands so that because they know they are ultimately going to die at the hands of this man, right? But because he wasn't actively you know choking her at the moment of her committing this self defense act of killing mm-hmm. she can go to prison even though he has been a constant threat and is probably getting progressively scarier so i don't know i don't know about the menendez brothers i just thought that they were spoiled and just were wanting to have control over their parents money that's mm. what i mean that's how it was spun and that's how i viewed it again i was young when that happened and so reading that was i just kind of took people magazine at their word <laughs> And the thing is, though, is that it's never been refuted, though. Like, they, they're still in prison. Mm. 
and nowadays, and you know, like there's, there's a lot of, a lot of things are revisited now and DNA and stuff like that. Like it just seems like it's, it's pretty strong, a strong enough evidence against that They actually plan to kill their parents for all their reasons that had nothing to do with abuse, quite honestly, because I think at this point, wouldn't the case have been reopened, especially now when people are actually talking and listening to people more about about child abuse and abuse cases and stuff like it just it seems like maybe tomorrow something will come out about it I don't know but it -hmm. it just seems like that would be revisited if they had honestly experienced that trauma maybe to that extent I mean there's only so much time and also like there are a lot of judges who won't hear those kinds of cases and maybe there aren't enough people interested in fighting for that case because maybe there aren't enough people who believe that they weren't. I mean, I don't know if they're guilty or not. Yeah. I just uh, am not quick to, to think that, you know, I mean, people are told to take women seriously when they say they're sexually assaulted or when they say they're abused. And I think it, yeah. it's equally important to consider the possibility that they were abused. Mm-hmm. But then, I think it's I think it's because of the conduct after their parents were killed. Oh, I don't know. Like what they, they, they they went out and spent a lot of money. Like they were partying, mm-hmm. they bought cars, like that. Like and for me, Anthony. that's <laughs> Do you say easy really money? Casey Anthony. No, she didn't get any money, oh, but she was out yeah. partying right after. Yeah. Well, and and that's just it. It's, it's the conduct. I mean, everybody grieves differently, but it's the fact that they went out and really like lived a high life for what the few months that they were able to. Did so, not have that. So that, I think, I think that was used against them as to, as it should be. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you, I don't know, again, everyone's experiences. I mean, regardless, they went through a trauma, killing your parents is going to be traumatic. I mean, that's not always, you, even if you're, I, I, I think it would be not if you, not if you have that lacking empathy thing. Oh, okay. Fair people. enough. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You're because people get off on that. A sociopath, you don't feel any. Yeah. Regret. Okay. Well, then I guess I'm not a sociopath because I was not connected to my parents, but I didn't want to kill them. <laughs> so we have to be careful that? about diagnosing sociopaths and psychopaths because I saw on Twitter the other day that it's considered offensive now to call someone a psychopath or a sociopath because you are encompassing a, a group of people in this little slot that makes them all the kind of psychopathic murderer that kills without, you know, caring or whatever, when apparently there are various levels of psychopathy and sociopathy and those people deserve to be heard and recognized as real people too. And they are not all killers and they are not all apparently lacking empathy. I don't quite know what the whole diagnosis, you know, chart is but you you can't you can't use that word either so it's kind of like coming after child free people after experiencing child free reddit (laughs) (laughs) what (laughs) don't lump all child free people based on what you've experienced in child free reddit is my point it's kind of along that something like that yeah but but yeah i had heard about the whole like there's a different like it's like a spectrum in a way Mm. well i'm not calling it a spectrum but it's like different levels of spectrum a bad word now too holy fucking christ (laughs) is it i didn't know that oh really i don't know or maybe it's a scale like there is a book um called the psychopathy scale scale. yeah yeah there is a scale i'm gonna google that the spectrum a bad word my my wig is interfering with my facial recognition on my ipad (laughs) (laughs) i don't a bad word no i mean the whole thing about being politically correct nowadays is you have to check every single day because things- and you know what that's ridiculous because they are not trying to be polit- I, you can't you can't no there there is being a decent person and saying things that are not intentionally offensive um there is not being racist there is not being ableist that's fine but you can't go down to like oh she made fun of toes and i have bone spurs and that's just you know making fun of people with bone spurs who have toes and i'm offended and i think that there should be some whole committee <laughs> <laughs> you can only go so Start far drink. <laughs> stop thinking every single little teeny issue you have is worthy of the whole world taking notice expect <laughs> adversity and deal with it and get over it 
Christy just kept her face. She just kept going. And was like, her drink like came out of her nose or something. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, oh my God, I'm crying. This is probably I, love, I love it when Kristen goes on those tangents because it's so true. I agree with everything you said. It's just I was trying to swallow when you said it. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't stop. I didn't see that. I was looking elsewhere. <laughs> no, it was great. It was a very good moment because I, I mean, what you say is completely true. It's oh, okay. <laughs> I understand the um sensitivity issue around people who can't have kids and they've been trying and trying and they're devastated by it or maybe they've had a miscarriage or they've lost kids and so I understand why the question itself is very personal to those people and I understand those people being offended by that question I don't understand people who simply don't want kids being offended by the question do you have kids or being you know like just you know like a little emoji ball running around with his hands going crazy because they were asked right. if he had kids right oh i think now that's an opportunity for people to stand up and say no i just didn't want kids oh well, exactly yeah i think i think that you know even if that makes you uncomfortable to do i honestly think that is the best remedy because the more you say it the easier it gets and then you can say hey if you want to ask more questions go listen to the child for girls podcast and they will they will explain everything you ever need to know and you don't have to badger me about being child free again <laughs> like there's that alternative but yeah I, I think i i don't put trigger warnings on any of my content actually i'm not going to um also yeah no i i i get what you're saying and i I really agree with it, especially, um, I mean, it, it, I used to get really annoyed when people ask or assume that I had kids because I want to be known publicly as a child-free person. Like it's important for me that people know that I did not want to have kids, not, not because it's like about me personally. It's just that I want people to know that it's a freaking choice. So now I'm glad when they ask that or assume that because then I can open up a conversation. So I, I think I want people to take it like to open up a conversation or they just say no. And even if they leave it, no, I didn't want to have kids, just put it out there and then walk away from the conversation. So that makes the other person think because not everybody wants to have that long conversation and that's fine. But I want people to, I want he, like everybody to be aware that it's a freaking choice. <laughs> Some people yeah. are not comfortable with saying no, and then no, and that and that's fine. But there's so many things we all do things that are uncomfortable. Yeah, but some people are really not comfortable. I mean, some people. Yeah. Some, I've met other people who has who have said to me, "I don't, I don't understand why people need to know my business. It's my business, and mm -hmm. I, I get that. And they don't want to be public and proud and loud about being child free. And it's fine. It's all that's also a choice. Like not all of us have to be like." putting out content every day about how happy we are yeah. how free. they really don't want to and it's just like it depends on the circumstance on how you grew up on your family I mean on your values your uh so just there's so many things that come into play and the reason like I, I recently talked to somebody who said to me um I don't I also don't want to be like uh, do you have children? And then she'll be like, no. And then kind of like just turn around and leave because that's like, you know, it's drama. It's like, no. Like, <laughs> that sounds like, fun. <laughs> so, well, it's like so dramatic, you know, it's like a soap <laughs> opera, like just waiting for it to happen there. And fade out well, music in the background. <laughs> yeah. So she was like, I don't know, you know, uh, I, I don't, I want to avoid the question completely. And well, you can't control what people ask you. But you certainly can control what you answer. Um, but some people really don't feel comfortable at all speaking about their choice. And that sounds like it, like if it's if it's just that you're a very private person, period. Because um, my husband, if he were asked about, well, actually, I don't think he minds too much saying that he he'll say he doesn't have kids. But I don't think he feels comfortable saying it was a choice because it's personal to him. And he doesn't like talking about personal things to anyone who he doesn't know. So in that regard, I, I mean, I can appreciate it in all ways, but if the thing that makes you uncomfortable specifically is saying that you don't want kids, the reason it's so uncomfortable is because more people aren't saying it. And so it's not part of the conversation that is acceptable to have. And if more people were saying, no, I just don't want kids. And if this became a more commonly known and accepted uh, decision, 
then they wouldn't feel uncomfortable saying it anymore. And I'm not saying they should, um, you know, give make themselves supremely uncomfortable and say it, but they might consider it and just try it and see what happens. Because I think Lenora's right that the first time you say it, maybe it'll feel really, really weird. But then after that, maybe you'll just get some kind of momentum, you know, this sort of excited sort of, wow, yeah, I'm like owning it. Yeah, it's, it's owning it, it really is. So I think that also, it changes the energy of what, uh, of the conversation of the dynamic, because even if someone takes offense to your answer of, no, I didn't want to have kids, if you own it, 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 it helps you, um, it helps you react or respond to whatever comes next in the conversation. Because if someone's going to give me a lecture, I'll just be like, okay, well, what makes you, and then I'll dive deeper into them because obviously there's something that they need to talk about. Right. So, Ooh. but that's where I'm at at this point in my twenties, definitely not, yeah. but you know, to, cause I wanted to ask you, Kristen, and you did kind of answer that question already, um, about, well, what you initially brought up and what Isabel said about, you know, why people shouldn't get offended or what you, what did you say about people should not get offended for being asked not if you that, have kids? Because that's what everybody... No, no, no. Not that they shouldn't get offended. I mean, be offended all you want, but don't think you should be protected from it. Don't oh, think... Oh, okay, that, okay, okay. You no, know, that's... Right. So it's not about stopping people asking f- from asking, how many kids do you have? Or do you want kids? It's not about that then. No, 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 no. Yeah. I, I mean, if, if, if you're annoyed by it, you're annoyed by it. I still think, though, what we said in a previous episode about using that as an opportunity to... Uh, educate them or Mm -hmm. find out why they're interested or, you know, just have a conversation about it instead of being pissed off and try to understand that they probably are genuinely curious because they probably haven't met many people who don't want kids or Mm -hmm. who didn't even know it was an option to not want kids. I'm just saying that everything can't be so precious. You know what I mean? Like not everyone does not deserve to have their, unless you want to be a hermit, you're going to encounter other people and they're going to say things that make you uncomfortable or that make you feel something. And that's okay. And is it? (laughs) No, if you don't like it, don't interact with people. I completely respect that too, but don't, don't interact with people and expect them all to know how you want to be treated and treat you like as if you're a little piece of, you know, blown glass or something. And I I think again, it comes, I think people want to know or that's their own clumsy way of starting a conversation about something they're actually curious about they just don't know how to proceed with the conversation and if it just comes out like almost accusatory (laughs) like again I've used that example of that woman who got triggered by a a child-free travel photo I posted and then she's like wait a second parents can travel too but then it turns out that there was more to that story and we had a really good conversation but it, it started out kind of like Whoa, feel, it, it could have been perceived as she was attacking me for yeah. being happily child free, but it, there was much more going on with her. So it just, at, at your first response will be like, okay, fine, I'm going to fight you. I know. That's always my first response. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I always used to tag you and ask you to like comment on troll comments. And stuff but there like are that. many times I shouldn't because that is my, like, I, I get all, you uh-huh. know, I just get all fighty when I shouldn't. I should, I should. I should at least allow 10 minutes for that to, I mean, I'm as guilty as anybody else of being overly, uh, overly excitable when it comes to certain kinds of questions, which is why I think I am qualified (laughs) to tell people to be less sensitive because I also need to be less sensitive. (laughs) Okay. Gotcha. (laughs) I, I have my days. I sometimes wake up and I'm like, Oh, I'm not feeling it at all. Like I feel that everything's going to like make me angry today. And it does. And some days I'm just like, yeah, whatever. People don't say whatever they want. So if it, is it hormonal or something? I have no idea. I think people just have moods. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, of course we do. But I don't know. I just like to know if that has something to do with not me being in a female body, but just in general, like biology, <laughs> science. <laughs> no, I, I think, I, I don't know. It could be hormonal because definitely times of the month I go, wow, I feel like Kristen, <laughs> like fighting with people. <laughs> yeah, it was my turn to you spit out your drink. <laughs> you actually spoke like, Kristen out the other day in one of our, oh, you weren't there in the, were you there? Yes, you were. What are we talking about? 
when we sold Chris we out about not being able to have Chris, uh, oh no, you weren't there. It was one of the morning chats on Clubhouse. And Lenora, they were talking about this guy who's a misogynistic prick and that we should have him in our show. And I was like, well, we almost had one of those, but Kristen scared him off. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And then Kristen pissed him off. So he didn't come along to our show because he was Yeah, like, that's right. <laughs> yes. It was Kristen's fault. And then and then someone else suggested me or talk. We found another potential person to replace. And then I said to Isabel, okay, let's let us let us let us talk to him, but let's not let Kristen talk to him because he, he might get scared off from coming on our show. Because he was another controversial figure like that that we thought we could have on the show as yeah, a replacement. We need to be fair about this. I uh, pissed <laughs> that guy off way before we asked him to come on the show because oh, he was okay, being okay. he was being transformed wifey sort of on Twitter, right? And so responses to him led him to believe not I wasn't even that bad. No, really. I was gonna say that there was. I remember that there is nothing fighty even really about you were you were no asking, just challenged him. Yeah, but you were you challenged him very respectfully. Like you never, you, I never feel that you're out of line when you're like on Twitter. You you act you're very good with words, and so it was a challenge. But it wasn't it wasn't even snarky. But you could tell that that's how he took it. Yeah, because then he gave us some BS reply as to why yeah, he wouldn't come. Said on that show. we had been snarky. Like I'm not coming because you're snarky. Yeah, and there was there. I mean, that was so not snarky a response. It was a legitimate question, but he obviously had no intention. Because snarky or not, he would have been the type that would have come on the show just for publicity sake. Oh I yeah, think, right. So. I don't know. Maybe we intimidated him or something. Just... I think if we, I think if he didn't think we would be able to, I don't know, maybe he suspected we'd do a little bit of research before he came mm -hmm. on. Maybe he suspected we would have arguments for whatever he would say. And, and that's not at all fun for a guy like that who just wants to be able to tell women yeah. what you should be doing is getting married and having kids, white kids especially. And maybe that's the problem. Maybe he found out not all of us are white. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> There's only there's only one and a half white people on this show. So. <laughs> he is a known racist. Hey, I am genetically half olive skinned because I'm half Albanian. Oh, you well, and <laughs> and actually, Isabel, like Latino people are Latino people, Latinx people. Again, what term do I use? Latinx. They're all Latinx is not politically correct. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> oh like my god. <laughs> Just like female with the X, that's not right now either. So confused. Yeah. So your your nationality is a blend too, though, right? So like we're all we yeah. all have whiteness in us on this show. I took the twenty three and Me genetic test, and I'm mostly white, mostly European white, okay. but I also have like African blood, Native Native American blood, and I have uh, Jewish blood as well. Okay, yeah. so so there's no white people on this show, basically. <laughs> I'm white identifying. You're, you're white identifying. Okay, I'm half white, white identifying. <laughs> See, again, this is like, it's so bloody confusing. Like, what do you... I, I even, even think of the female conversation. Like, I identify as female, even though I, I don't actually feel like it. But I am... But what born. does it mean to feel like it? I mean, well, is it and, and that and th that's where I've been exploring because I think technically non-binary would be how I like I again I recognize I'm in a female body, but I don't I don't really identify with it. I'm just I'm just a being who happens mm -hmm. to be in a female body. That's about the extent of it. That's interesting. Again, because I don't I don't know if it has something to do with being queer. Like I've never felt like and again it's the gender the gender constructs that have been shaped like this is what women do and this is what women are expected to feel and this is what we blah 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 <laughs> like okay but I don't I don't want to be a wife and I don't want to be a mom and I don't want to run a house and like I hate domestic crap and again that's all gender constructs that's all what females right. have been saying like what that means anything exactly and I've learned a lot from you and even because one time you said to me you're like well being a wife just means that you're married like what yeah. you you said it in a way I was like oh yeah like because to me when I think of wife there's this, this whole list of tasks and expectations that I want nothing to do with which is why I balk at the idea of being a wife and you were like well, thing I ever wanted to be yeah and you and you told you're like well being a wife just means like to you it means you're you're 
married <laughs> like but yeah. unless you're someone who does like the 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 construct and you're yeah, like oh, yeah you know, but that's that's you choosing that's the kind of wife right you can be. right but you you I don't know you don't not buy into it but you have no, your own no. yeah yeah so no, I no, happen to be with a guy and I love him and we have a relationship and we happen to be married right and see when you said that I was like oh okay so then that list went away in my head I was like okay it's not scary and also you can always get out of it there's nothing scary about getting married except the fact that I would be married <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, unless you don't want to, obviously, if you don't want to get married, it's the scariest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, and that that's how that's how I felt. I was just kind of like, I I because I used to play at a lot of weddings as a violinist. And I just I just feel like so confined because they're saying their vows and everyone's like, oh, this is so romantic. And I'm like, <laughs> not if okay just, is in there. It's just, it's just, it's it yeah, for me, it takes away freedom, but that that's my, my own thought process of process of it too. Mm -hmm. because I grew up in like the more traditional sense of what wife dumb is like looking at my mother and I just knew that I didn't want that life so I want to know Isabella on the last clubhouse chat we had you said you do want to get married um is it that you want to be like what if you uh ended up meeting somebody and you two were really super happy and you connected on this deep spiritual level but they didn't want to get married is it being married that's important to you or is it being with this person that you feel a connection with and someone you can, you know, share your life with? It's both. Um, what is it about being married specifically? I think it's the right. It has nothing to do with religion. It has more to do with the rights. It has most, it has more to do with this like declaration, like public declaration in a way. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it's going to down to the like, courthouse or whatever like I don't I don't want a huge wedding with 400 guests and like a big white dress that's not my dream um but I do want to have that it, it, I don't know and I understand that like the the actual document like the marriage certificate means nothing in the end re regarding how connected you are with your partner because there's so many people who are married who have like who are terrible like they're not in a real relationship real in the sense that they're not really partners. They're not really supporting each other. And, and maybe they have a lot of issues that they don't work through and then it all goes to shit. Uh, so in the end, the actual certificate means nothing because I also know people who are not married who have beautiful relationships. Mm. For me, it's just like the right, I think, in a way, kind of like like a break, break like in a, like a sort of like a break point in a way. I don't know. Am I making no, I get what you're saying. Okay. Because I think of it literally from the paperwork standpoint, like if I had a life partner, I would redo the will for that. And then power of attorney, would I make that person my power of attorney? Would I, or get it my, but like, because seriously, like that, that's what I think about. Because you're talking about rights and stuff. And here in Canada, we have what we all call common law. So it's depending on the province after six months of sharing the same address, you can be it's six months or a year, you're considered common law right? For example, my brother never married the mother of his children, but he will now on his taxes always be considered separated unless he gets married, but because they were common law. And so he has to be listed as separated. So here you don't have to be married to have those rights. But like, again, I think of like the paperwork because if I'm with someone in the second half of my life and we even if we have separate houses, but who inherits what? And do we want to set the, each other up? Believe me, I'd be going through all that paperwork without actually getting married because you're still- I know. Um, and, and actually I would gotten that idea from Lizette because she was explaining how her and her, like she doesn't live with her significant other, but they have paperwork, but they're not married. And I would still do that. It's kind of like a civil union type of thing. Is that still different from marriage to you? Like, is that- is that basically, is that sufficient enough or would you still want to get married? First of all, first <laughs> how of all, much paperwork do you need, woman? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, this is not a proposal for Isabel Bio, by the way. I'm just curious. Um, okay, first of all, if I ever get married, we will have to sign up a pre. We will have to sign a prenup. Yeah. There's no question about that. I don't care if the guy is the freaking Prince of Monaco with freaking sign a prenup and then whatever happens later then happens later I don't I don't really think about papers and documents and 
wheels. Because everyone's just romantic that way. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, she's- Isabel and I would not make a good couple because I need, there's way too much paperwork when it comes to being in a relationship with me. It would not work. (laughs) I'm not thinking about any of that to be honest, so. (laughs) But thank you. Thank you for watching. (laughs) Well, I'm just curious because to some people, for some people, the marriage certificate does play a role in how serious they take the relationship. And, and I, you know, some people really do like to tr- the tradition of it. So to them being married, and I've had it framed to, to me this way. And I was like, really? Which was, it's harder to get out of being married. <laughs> and yeah. then I've met Kristen, who's like, well, see, I could marry Kristen because like, oh, we can just get divorced. Like yeah, yeah. there's a, there's like an easy out clause with Kristen. It seems like Isabel's like in it for the long haul. And not that Kristen, you're not, but you believe in divorce. I do. I mean, if you want out, I give you no problems. If you don't love me anymore, if you're not happy, fine, go. All I need is a couch and a bed and no one's taking my desk. My desk, right. I'm in love with it. No one can have it. But yeah, like both times I got divorced, I hardly took it. Like I didn't take anything. All I took was basic, like the things I need. Yeah. So it, it, it is, this is, it is a really interesting conversation to hear what people think about what, what does marriage mean or what does the paperwork mean or the certificate? Like, does that play a factor into your decisions? And for me, I think for me, it's more about the, I don't know, the, the act of marriage and the paperwork involved. That's just too much. I love paperwork, but I don't want to, <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't really like the idea of the amount of paperwork to undo it. Yeah. So, you know, that's what, that's honestly what I think about when I think about marriage at, at this particular stage of my mind. And, and I'm open enough to think I might experience it once, but it's not a requirement. It's more about the companionship and the connection I have. And if I want to do that, because it would take a very patient person to do that with me <laughs> because, you know, we're all complicated, but you know, it's, yeah. I, I, I know myself and I don't wish that just on anybody. So um. <laughs> you're so thoughtful. <laughs> exactly. I'm thinking of the, my, my non-existent children and my non-existent spouse. <laughs> exactly. um, there's a lot of good qualities, but there's, you know, there's a lot of other things that I need and, and that's, it's easier for me to, to deal with that myself than putting that onto somebody else. So we'll see what happens. I think that's so sweet. <laughs> thanks romance is dead <laughs> well that is romantic to me though that 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 is romantic if you're considering somebody else's feelings and paperwork i was always like don't bring me flowers bring me your driver's record driver's license uh, abstract with your your record uh bring me your credit score and bring me that stuff and then i'll det- you know like because that, that's, that's a good one that's important yes that's important you know <laughs> i mean forget the flowers like if you're if you can't be responsible in your driving, if you can't be responsible, like we all go through crappy financial times, I get it. But, you know, those are the romantic gestures that would mean a lot to me more. Than, I can buy my own flowers, <laughs> you know? So I, I've been, yeah, I've, I've, I've always been like that. Um, and that to me is romantic. Anyway, everyone, if no, anyone's that listening. Makes that makes sense. Everyone has their own, at, like Ian does. Um, I hate papers. I hate spreadsheets. I hate numbers. I just like that interest that does not interest me. He's tried to talk to me about finances or something. And I'm not saying I'm completely ignorant of it, but if he gets a little bit too into the weeds or like, if he talks about investments or something, I just kind of, I mean, it's, it's like a, it's almost like a narcoleptic reaction. I mean, it's physiological. I just, I just (laughs) so bored and sleepy. (laughs) I can't help it. Well, then we should take that topic off next week's podcast. (laughs) Unless we want her to to go to sleep. Yeah, that's true. All right. Well, I think we've had a very productive chat. We talked so many subjects. See, we we didn't know what we were going to talk about. You didn't know what we were going to talk about. And it all worked out. Thank you so much for being here and listening to us. Uh, So this is the end of our chat. Um, Subscribe. Please just subscribe. If you want to reach us, our email address is childfreegirls at gmail.com and our website is childfreegirls.com. I'll do the question. That's a lot of childfreegirls.com. Childfreegirls <laughs> <laughs> at gmail.com is childfreegirls.com. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs>
And if you want to find us on social media, we're at Child Free Girls <laughs> on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And we are on Clubhouse, but not as Child Free Girls. Find us at on Child Free Club. Um, we host that and we do daily rooms where you can talk to us uh, via audio if you have an iPhone and if you are an Android user we'll get to you soon hopefully if they allow that uh, Android users to use the app but we are available there if you need an invite to join the app please send us an email or a DM to wherever you reach us at um and we're also on amazon we have a lovely book child for girls comfort food for thought in paperback and on kindle um yeah. Yeah. Kristen? <laughs> Today's question is, did I offend you? <laughs> <laughs> and if I did, the next question is, will you accept my apology? <laughs> <laughs> that's all. Oh, okay. that's a great question. All right. <laughs> and no leave your comments below, in the, in, or you can leave comments here on YouTube if you're watching us. And if you are listening to us on a podcast, you can send us your answer to our email, childfreegirls at gmail.com. You were going to say something, Lenora? Yeah, no new, no nude photos, please. Please. We don't need any of those. Well, Kristen, it looks like she has something oh. to say about that. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no nudes and no toes, no bones first. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> No, you say bye. No, you say bye. <laughs> oh my God, I'm leaving. <laughs> you leave first. I'm going. Bye. Bye. <laughs>